God's doing something very hidden. It's very quiet, but it's so awesome and supernatural that it's beyond human comprehension. In fact, what the Lord's doing right now is going to affect the whole world in these last days. And here's what it is. He's preparing a very small but most powerful army of dedicated Christians who are more dedicated than anybody who followed Hitler. They were considered to be among the most loyal people on the face of the earth. But folks, this army that God is raising up is going to be the most dedicated army on the face of the earth. Never before anyone is pure, devoted, and fearless as this remnant that's coming forth. They're going to come forth and do exploits and they're going to shake hell, literally. This new army is going to be made up of handmaidens of the Lord. It's going to be made up of servants of the Lord, ordinary Christians who lay hold of God, and God lays hold of them, and a whole new realm of, of service, a whole new realm of the moving of the Holy Spirit is about to break forth. Much of God's plan that I want to share with you can be found in 1 Samuel. He's going to raise up a Samuel company. Hallelujah. The holy remnant. Verse 11, chapter 3. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both ears of everyone that hear this shall tingle. It's going to be a shocking thing that God does. This new thing is going to amaze and startle. It's the judgment of God on an old religious system and the raising up of a whole new program of the Holy Ghost. That's what you see in 1 Samuel. It's all about the death of an old church religious system and the birthing of a new holy remnant. I want you to keep in mind that what God did in Samuel's day, he keeps doing in every generation. In every generation, when, when the so-called church, the organized church, backslides and gets cold and compromising, God just gives up on it and raises up another. He's always had a people after his heart. He's always had a praying people in every generation. And that's called the remnant. All through the ages, there's been a remnant. But all this remnant that's coming is going to be beyond anything the world has seen. In the second chapter, beginning at 27th verse, right down the rest of the chapter, this prophet looked at Eli, and he said, Behold, the day is coming. I'm going to cut off your arm. I'll cut off your arm. So I'm going to quit this house at Shiloh. I'm going to remove my presence. I'll make you powerless. I'll judge your wicked pastors. I'm going to pronounce Ichabod on you. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation. What God is saying, I'm giving up on Shiloh. I'm giving it up, and I'm going to give it over to the hands of the enemy. Folks, that's exactly what's happening in America and the world today. The organized religious system has been turned over to the enemy. The enemy. There are going to be men standing in the pulpit that are going to give the people what they want. If you've got idolatry in your heart, you're going to wind up in a church with a preacher with idolatry in his heart. And that preacher is going to minister to that idol that's in your heart. He's going to tell you it's okay to sin. It's all right to be a sports fanatic and not pray or seek the face of God. You can go to many churches, even Pentecostal churches, and it's death. God's not there. God's gone. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom you know not, and then come and stand before me in this house? which is called by my name and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. In other words, we're safe. We're no danger. We're not going to lose our salvation. The prophet says, go back now to my place which was in Shiloh. Now set my name at the first. And see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. While the church of Eli was under judgment and being forsaken by the glory of the Lord, God was busy raising up a remnant. And Samuel represents the holy remnant. And I want to show you how God trained Samuel to come up to take the place of this dead religious system. How God had a plan. And this is what God's going to do. This is what he's doing right now. He's training many of you. I believe when I'm finished, you'll be able to know whether or not you're a part of this remnant that he's raising up to do his work in the last day. The remnant is always birthed in prayer and intercession, always. Hannah birthed Samuel to bitter tears and much prayer. Listen, please. If you're going to seek God with all your heart, with all your soul and all your strength, and you're going to feel the pain and the grief of God for his church, you're going to suffer consequences. You're going to be misunderstood on all sides. You're going to people accuse you of all kinds of things. Hannah prayed, if you give me a man, child, I'll give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. 
And the word, the name Samuel means God heard my prayer. That's what Samuel means. Folks, God's hearing the prayer of a people in his house. A people who yearn for an outpouring of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. A people who yearn for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon their sons and their daughters. A people who want to see the glory of the Lord come down on his church. A people who want to see God move in a very special way in these last days. God's going to hear their cry. Now, these are people who are really on their face seeking him. These are people who are pouring their heart out to God. And there were people that were given, according to Hannah, given to the Lord all the days of their life. These people are so committed, there's no thought of backsliding. There's no up and down, in and out, hot and cold. They are wholly given to the heart of God. Do you know that Samuel was such a man of prayer? And all the people said to Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not. Folks, there's going to be a praying remnant that people will go, not for counseling, but for prayer. God wants to raise up prayer warriors who've touched heaven. And the training of the remnant is going to be trained to know the voice of the Lord. God called. He spake to Samuel. He wasn't speaking to Eli. God's trying to raise up an army of people who know his voice, who hear from him directly. And what was the first thing God told Samuel? God implanted in Samuel, and he's doing it in the remnant. He planted a vision of God that says God will not put up with sin in his house. I want to show you my hatred for sin in my house. I want to show you my hatred for compromise in the ministry. I want to show you what it's going to take, Samuel, to hear my voice and walk with me. The time is coming. The time is coming when people are going to want to hear this word from heaven. And folks, if you want to hear from God, God will speak to you. That means you don't go into his presence carrying your load of sin with you. You allow God to deal with that sin. You allow God to take that temper away from you and sanctify it. You ask God to do what he has to do in your life. The Bible said men's hearts will fail them for fear, watching those things coming on the earth. Folks, it's going to be beyond anything we could imagine. But there's going to be a holy remnant that are steadfast and sure, unmovable. You're coming here now that God would put divine principles in your soul and fire you up and get you off the fence, and get you seeking his face, and deal with sin in your heart. Oh, folks, get into this book. Get into this book. Get along with God. Let him begin to speak to you. There are nothing, the things that are despised, and I shall raise them up and anoint them. I'll send them forth to do exploits in my name. And volunteer your soul, body, and spirit, and mind. And cry out to the Lord. Here I am, send me. I will lay hold upon you, and I will anoint you, and I will open doors for you, and I will stir your heart, and you will know me, and you will know my voice, and I will use you to glorify my name. You will never have a name, but my name will be glorified through your lips and your heart. You'll never be recognized, but I'll recognize you. And on that day, I will reward you because you were faithful to the call. had a vision in which the hand of God picked him up and took him to a high mountain. And there he saw a picture of a mighty city. Now when it says he took him to a high mountain, it's very significant. The hand of God picked him up and planted him on this high mountain. And there a man appeared to him. And the man looked like his feet had been in a furnace of brass. The same man that John saw in the Isle of Patmos. He said his day, he went in a furnace, burnished brass. That's none other than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ appeared to him and said, I'm going to take you on a trip. I'm going to show you a day that's coming. A day beyond anything anyone could ever comprehend. This was the Lord bringing Ezekiel into the house of God. And that house of God on the mountain represents Jesus Christ. A house that we are, we are of his building, he's building his house. Now this vision is about Jesus. But this vision especially focuses on Jesus. And it's about an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. 
In the last days, after he brought me again under the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under from the right side of the house, at the south side of the altar. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Now, the spring and the fountainhead of this river is the cross of Jesus. One of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. That's where the river began. The blood cleanses, the water flows to heal and bring life to everything it touches. And Ezekiel comes to this place, and it's overwhelms him, he can't go on, it's over his head. He said, I could not pass over. But he's saying, I don't understand this, Jesus, because if this river represents the Holy Spirit, if this represents an ever increasing glory that you're going to give your people, there are these. There's going to be the waters to swim in because I can't even pass over it now. He knew God. He was touched by the Spirit of the Lord. He sees something he can't understand. He said, I couldn't pass over. He never did swim in these waters that you and I swim in. He couldn't see it. It was so overwhelming to Ezekiel. He couldn't grasp it. The Bible says they were walking through the midst of the water. In fact, he said, he brought me through the waters. See, the Lord kept urging him on, come on a little deeper, Ezekiel. There's going to be more for the church. This is what it's going to be like in the church of the last days. There will be a people that will have this vision for the ankles. Another generation will have it to the knees. Another person that might come in will have it to the loins. But now Ezekiel, come a little deeper, and he's probably up to his chin. And he can't go any further, and he stops. He stops. He said, I could not pass over for the waters were risen. What is this swimming? Could it be that he said to the Lord, Lord, what is this sea that you're showing me? What is this vast thing that I see ahead of me? I see it opening up to a sea. I see rivers. It's, it's miraculously increasing. Where's the increase coming from? And it's just over my head. He does not understand or comprehend it. Brother, sister, if you think that you and I have experienced the presence of Jesus in a glorious way, if you think we've had a marvelous revelation of who Jesus is, we have seen nothing in comparison to what he wants to show us and what he has promised to show us and what he is going to show a people. There, will, there has to be a people come into this. God said it. There has to be a people that are going to be in waters to swim in. What, what are these waters? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And what is the work of the Holy Spirit? To reveal Jesus. To reveal Jesus. There is coming what he was seeing finally a people who in such a vast glory Jesus was manifesting himself in such amazement among them. They were swimming, they were abandoned in this great waters of life, total abandonment to Jesus. And Lord, remove all the corruption, remove all bitterness, Lord Jesus, stubbornness, everything that would block the vision of Jesus. Take it from us, Lord, and give us a heart for you tonight.